time in Hamilton and Ireland have been beaten by the Maori All Blacks. The full-time score was 32 points to 17. I'm delighted to say Keith Wood has been watching it and is with us this morning. Keith, how are you getting on? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. That was hard watching for a lot of that game. Yeah, we knew it was going to be tough. I'm not sure we knew it was going to be quite this tough from the, the first game, from the warm-up game. Yeah, I look. I, I think we did know it was going to be tough, but um, we looked uh, pretty jaded um, with the pace of the game. Seemed to put us under a huge amount of pressure. It, um, I'm always stunned, actually, by the handling of New Zealand teams in the rain, and um, it has been raining there pretty much all day. Rain for a lot of the game, and you wouldn't seem to know it from from the handling. The passes were perfect out in front all the time. Good level of sympathy with it. Um, the pace, the running lines, um, I think it gives a, a fairly sharp insight into some of these players who, um, who've who been brought out to be blooded on the tour, that the standards to play at international rugby is pretty high. And um, I just thought the pace pretty much at rock time uh, and the handling was had us in all sorts of trouble. So, so those are the two big uh, takeaways from the, this morning, you think, rock time and uh, just basic skills in tough conditions. Yeah, ruck time and, and our attention to ruck and dealing with the referee and how the ruck goes because we got penalised off the park. So we never seem to get ourselves into any level of momentum. Um, um, and we seem to give a lot of momentum uh, to the Maoris because every time uh, there was a ruck, we seem to give away a penalty or it was very, very quick for them. So, you know, all our players who are at the end of a, a long season um, if you don't slow down the ball, you're never going to catch a breath, you know, and we were, I mean, our forwards were lumbering um, in the last seven or eight minutes of the first half. They'd been run absolutely ragged and that's when the, the gap seemed to open up a little bit more. Is that, from your experience, the biggest challenge of going down on these summer tours is, is the fact that you are at the end of the long season and, and you are a little bit gassed even for a minute one? And I think, look, it's a, it's a, an incredibly long season, but I, I'm not using that as an excuse. I'm, I'm using it as uh, um, for, for a couple of different reasons. You go down there, you play, you have to get to the pitch of the game, um, you have to get to the pace of the game, you have to slow things down so that you're able to actually go and play. You have to have a defensive setup. And so when you look at, at the Irish the Irish team, it's a lot of guys who haven't played international rugby, a lot of guys who this is a pretty big step up. And, and some of them, uh, Heineken rugby is a, is a step up for them and is pushing them a bit too much. This is pushing it up to another layer, another level. Um, and uh, you're trying to blend a team, you know, of our mixture of first, seconds, thirds players um, it, into into a match against a team who was playing was, with a high level of pride, a high level of attention to detail. I mean, I go back to the to the skill level at the start. Um, when you see Stevenson and Sullivan and uh, catching the ball at pace, um, still having the time to look to where they're going to pass it. I mean, there, were very, there was sympathy with the pass all the time. So they had players running on from depth, all the time, catching it with their fingers, not their hands or not their chest. Um, on a wet day, uh, Ireland never got themselves in a position to be able to defend properly. And I think we were exposed very heavily by some of the players not having played together before, um, um, especially when you're put under that level of pressure. So, uh, look, I thought just it's a chastening enough sort of day. I, I started out as writing notes for the first half, and I was just saying, look, this is a great opportunity for guys to see. The, the standard they're going to have to get to. But then it just drifts away as the game kind of goes along and then it just becomes a, a hard, really, really hard day at the office, you know. And I think some guys came out of it pretty well, but uh, not a huge number today. It seemed Ireland were kicking the ball away more aimlessly or with more frequency than they were during the Six Nations. Just, I, look, I, I'm... I'm Kicking the ball when we kick it is just is very annoying. I I, I think too often. And when we did have the ball in the twenty two in the first while, O'Brien kicked it away a, a lot. Uh, Casey, I think box kicked too much, um, and he was under huge pressure. I mean, the the front five were were getting fairly pummeled by the pace, but also in the scrum, um, and also at ruck time. So he was having to dig for the ball an awful lot. Um, there's a slight different interpretation of offside and uh, um, which is from where you're coming from an offside position and when the ball is out and uh, I don't know whether Wayne Barnes is trying to play it differently or but 
Ireland didn't adjust to that properly. Um, and uh, Casey got caught too often with the ball in hand. Um, so it, it was just, again, one of those just really, really t- tough things. But uh, you need to hold on to the ball. You can't kick it away too often. Um, having said that, no, I thought Frawley played pretty well um, on his first start. Like he hasn't played no time at 10. And I, I thought at times he grew into the game. And I know he went to kick a ball out in the full at the end. I'll never criticise him for that because um, Ireland had lost the game and he was pushing for every single bit of it. And I think that's the right thing for him to do. OK, so a glimmer of hope in, in Frawley's performance then. Who, who, who... Yeah, I, I, look, I think so. For his first time starting um, and getting a chance to play and he was given the full 80 minutes, which I appreciate. Um, I Look, I thought he did some things well, some things not so well, but that's fine. He's starting. So that's all those things are great. Um uh, I got. I was very worried, and I'm hoping that Keane Healy is okay because um, uh, he had to come on very early for Lachman. I thought Lachman. I thought he was a bit unsteady on his feet going off the field. I was surprised to see him coming back onto the field, and then he was taken off again at half time. Um, but Keane Healy looked. That looked like a horrible injury, and the referee reacted immediately to stop the game because um, he could hear the. The, the shout of pain from Keane Healy so I'm hoping that's not too serious um, but it looked pretty bad and I fear for him a little Yeah, especially at this stage of his career as well there's the, going to be a, a new call up in that position Keith or is it like I mean uh, Bielham comes on to, to try and uh, I guess st- stop the, the, the bleeding at that side of the scrum late on in, in that, that game but to lose Lockman and uh, to, to lose Healy potentially for the first test at least I mean that's um, that's a huge blow immediately to Andy Farrell and that's probably the big takeaway from today yeah, I mean, we had, a, we had a conversations about it a few weeks ago that our depth chart, um, we've struggled a little bit at the end of the season in the front row and our depth chart was just getting a little bit thin. Now it's got an awful lot thinner. So look, there are huge issues to worry. It isn't as if there's um, you're leaving a huge number of players at home um, that are, uh, are up to scratch at this level. So um, look, I think it'll be interesting to see exactly what they actually do because... Um, uh, you know there is three tests and another Maori game uh, it's it's a very tough tour I, like I'm really excited by the level of the tour but I'm not excited by the level of guys that went down injured No what what happens next do you think is, is it a, a new call up at that point? Uh, I think it has to be yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll obviously see how things develop on that front over the next little while. The the Lockwood situation is just a bit of a harder one to nail down because, as Keith said, he uh, came off, went back on, and then didn't show up again for the second half. So so a decision was clearly made at half time. And then the other thing, Keith, was was James Hume. That didn't look great either. No, it didn't. Um, I <laughs> thought it was uh, just a bit of a bang at the start, but then he couldn't seem to put his, his foot down on the ground. So it kind of looked like a, a stomach or a groin injury. Um and uh, yeah, that didn't look that didn't look too good. So look, we've already had a chunk of injuries on the tour before. You know, before the first match started, there's a few more from today. It depends on the seriousness of some of these. But um, look, that's that's one of the issues I think of playing in a in a very long season in the manner that we have. I think we're at a month eleven in the season, so um, we've managed to keep an awful lot of the teams pretty much injury free. I think for a lot of the year. Um, but uh, it seems to be taking its toll at the moment. Like obviously the tendency here is to to wonder whether or not five games was the, the correct decision given the, the amount of injuries but this is an unbelievably steep learning curve for those people who will who will now need to come in and that's the whole point of a, of a tour of the year before a World Cup is it not? Well I think it is actually and uh, strangely I think it's a very tough tour um, but I'm not saying I think it's a, it's a wrong tour. Um, look we have gone in uh, for World Cup after World Cup where we've been confident or not confident in the last World Cup we've kind of lost our way in the 12 months previous to the to the World Cup um, we hadn't made any of the changes this is the opportunity to make changes 12-14 uh, months out so that you have more options and um, like the options can't be just to keep the oldest players there till you get to the World Cup it has to be about unearthing new guys younger guys uh, giving them the exposure at international level to try and get the best out of them so that at least they're some way prepared by the time you get to a world cup but um so i look I, it's an incredibly important tour um the team has always had uh, high pretensions over the last while they've they've won some championships over the last period of time they're very capable um it's trying to bring it on to the next level and have the strength of depth and it's how do players react when they're suddenly drafted in like Niall Scannell landed yesterday and played 
35 minutes today, you know, and, and played pretty well, actually. So, um, the uh, you know, you have to be able to react. You have to be able to turn around very quickly in, in World Cup. So um, it's pretty important. To, this tour has been important always. It's been marked as as one of those big elements of where, where we go. But um, yeah, it was tough today. If you go through some of the, the positions then that uh, might be in question over the course of the next few weeks, like, I mean, you look at the back three and Jimmy O'Brien's obviously had a great season with Leinster, you Jordan Larmer and Keith Earls on the wing. I guess Earls is probably the, the person out of, out of those three you might have been expecting to put his hand up for test inclusion over the next few weeks. Are all those those three lads now really fighting to, to get bench time over, over the next little while and certainly this Saturday? Yeah, I, it's uh, it's very hard, I think, once... And it's one of those things, those nerve-wracking things. You almost don't. You want to get picked for the first match mm. on tour, and you don't, because it can have a, a, um, a very short turnaround time to go and play. And actually, playing three or four days apart is very tough, incredibly tough. In the forwards, almost too tough for the most part. Um, in the backs, yes, you can get away with it, um, and uh, but you don't want it with guys with hamstring injuries and fatigue and all that sort of stuff that sets in with that. But um, uh, look, my view on, on on this tour would be that all the players will get a game. I think different options will be taken. I think Ireland will look to win uh, as many matches as they can. And today wasn't a good start for that. And uh, they definitely want to win um, a test and they go to try and win the series, of course, because that's the, the nature of this group of players. But But they would definitely want to win a test. Um, but it's, it isn't about using the same players just to get from mm. A to B um, over the next three or four weeks. I think they're going to have to chop and change the player first. Like, is there a vulnerability that was exposed today as well to kicking in behind that that back three that's, that that the Marys have exposed? And maybe it's not a personnel issue. Maybe there's a bit of an Achilles heel that we perhaps didn't quite appreciate until this morning. It was a little bit of that, but not not too much, really. I mean, I think, like, New Zealand teams are very smart, so they play what they see in front of them in a lot of cases. And, um, like, this is very tough, I think, for a supporter to look at. But when you see the game at that pace, players are out of position consistently. And if, if we also talk about what we've been, um, I think, the reaction to Leinster losing to the idea that you need to have more grunt um, more grunt when you're playing against certain types of teams but when you play against an all-black team or an all-black Maori team um, it isn't about the size actually it's about how quickly you move around the field and by some of the pace at different times uh, I only burned um, uh, Bundiaki for uh, for one of the tries at the start um, for Stevenson try um, you know it's the amount of pace that that's been that that was on view would put you under huge pressure. So it's you have to get used to that. So it's been a very different type of rugby that the guys have been playing all season to suddenly go and play this particular type under these conditions, where you expect to have a little bit more time with the ball in hand, or, or to um, uh, to put pressure on people with ball in hand. Their handling was excellent. Ours put us under pressure, it slowed us down somewhat to make certain that we'd hold on to it. Okay, so there's a, a commonality here a little bit in terms of pace being an issue, either in open play and then also with the pace of, of the ruck. Like, is that, was that not a, a situation at the end of the season, especially with Leinster, that they were really thriving off quick ruck ball, whereas today it was kind of the opposite for Ireland? Yeah, it's a bit of that too, but also it's a mix of players that yeah. haven't played at... Completely in, different, really. It's the, it's the Ireland A team that's Leinster, really, as opposed to, to the team yeah, that we had today. And having played in an international uh, uh, um, jersey, you know, mm. so this make, it, it's it's a big step up in level. Um, look, I always think that these particular games, you learn an awful lot about the players. You're not going to say that all 23 that are used are, God, yeah, we did really well there. Now we know exactly where they are. But certain players come out of it and say okay he's able to play with a bit of composure we don't have to worry too much about him he can make the next step up and it's much easier to make the step up if you've got three or four um, very seasoned players in and around you so that's different when you have a team that you pick entirely from um, from scratch and I know the Maoris is done like that and that's the argument against it but the difference with that and as has always been is the level of skill and skills training that. Um, New Zealand kids have they're so comfortable with the ball I mean the level of comfort 
Um, that try, I think we talked about the pass from Ione to Stevenson. I think it was Stevenson. He was going at full tilt in the rain off his left hand, um, uh, running straight, uh, you know, passing left to right. Fantastic. And it was exactly where it was supposed to go. How come Ireland have been able to better cover up that disparity in skill level over the last couple of years, particularly in the, the games that took place in, in November? Well, I think for me, it puts down because this comes across as being far too negative and I don't want it to be negative. I don't think it's, I think there are plenty of negatives from, from today, but I also think it's, this is part of the process. And um, for for me, our Irish first team, um, and we're at the t- when we're at the top of our game and we play well, we're structured enough, um, defensive enough, uh, skilled enough playing with the same players to be able to do it. Our strength and depth is getting better and it's been getting better all the time, but it gets exposed when you play against a team that plays a style that you never, ever come across. So I thought we were exposed today and I think the players will learn an awful lot from it. There's also, I guess, the fact that this is, um, without, like, I mean, this is a team that's, I guess, a patchwork, you know, a load of debuts, a load of people playing maybe in, in positions that they weren't expected to get their first Ireland, Ireland cap in or certainly people early in their Ireland career. So I presume that defensive cohesion and when you're talking about the Irish system isn't something that you could have been ho- overly expectant of, of seeing in full flow today. No, you'd like it to have been better and you'd like mm. to have being able to slow down the rucks an awful lot, uh, an awful lot more, because that I think ultimately put our defensive structure under under pressure. You don't want to be thinking about your defensive structure. You just want to know, having done it by rote, you've done it enough. Um, you're having to think about it when you're when you're sucking diesel because the ball is so fast and you're consistently out of position. So that makes it pretty tough. Um, I do think these are things that you can work on. And I will also say that if you go down to New Zealand on a tour. Um, you tend to have a couple of easy matches before you get going. This was this was not an easy game. Um, uh, this was a big emotional game that was played at a uh, frenetic pace from the start, and uh, and and I think put us under pressure. I don't think we got ourselves into it, and and um, so like we've it's a tough few weeks ahead, like a really tough period of time. And it'll be the mark of which players stand up during that period of time. So it's like it is the hardest place to go on tour. And it is incredibly difficult down there. And they do play with a higher level of skill than we're used to. So um, like we have to learn about that and learn it very quickly. Gavin Coombs was one of the, the bright sparks for Ireland today. Yeah, um, well, for me, the the great joy was uh, Bondiaki's try mm. uh, because Gavin Coombs passed, and he doesn't he did, hasn't passed that much for Munster. And I know that sounds kind of wrong, but he's been used as a, as a one out ball carrier, very powerful guy. Um, he has been well below his standards this year. Um, I think he got a shock with the pace, um, but I actually thought he came back stronger in the second half from it. But that idea that everybody thinks he's going to carry the ball into contact, two people were drawn straight in to tackle him. And he had a very simple pass to uh, to Bondiaki to put him over from about 15 yards. So, look, he needs to be able to change up his game a lot more. The the, the quality of the back row for, for the international team is incredibly high. He does offer something different. He has an incredibly... Uh, um, good power game and it's how that's brought in and the most got out of it and that's what I'm actually looking forward to for this tour is to see what Farrell can do with the players um, with some of the players who have been off the mark this year can he re-energise them all get them back to a level of where they're excited by the game and it's very hard to be excited when you then play against uh, the Maori All Blacks who are on fire Mm, that's for sure so out of the players that actually got some game time today Keith who do you expect to play on Saturday? Um, I haven't even put any thought into that. Um, I think we may have uh, difficulty in around uh, hooker for for Saturday um, um, because we have we've had that injury and scandal coming out. So uh, uh, I think taking um, taking um, heaven and off early um, just means you're trying to protect resources. Um, I, I still see a fair bit of pace from Ryan Baird. I think there's something there that can be of, of use. I know he came off the bench today. I think when you look at some of the players who didn't come off the, pen, the bench, it's protecting players to, for, for either to play or to be on the bench at the weekend. Um, uh, I'd like to see whether the, the like Larmer again went down injured at one stage with a stinger. I thought it looked like um, 
um, and you wanted to see those guys fly, but they didn't get the ball in space to be able to fly. So, um, like, it makes it very hard to call who might who might get um, picked from that team. Very hard to back it up after three or four days. Yeah, for sure. And also, I guess maybe an absence of people putting their hands up as well probably doesn't shift the thinking what he might have thought for this weekend. So, who, who are you starting at ten out of interest, Keith, if you, if, for this weekend? So, Carberry does get some time off off the bench, but not enough to remove him from the conversation for for Saturday. No, I, I presume you start with with Johnny at ten and um, and see how it goes. I mean, you the the first test that you play, you want to try and get out of the blocks as hard as you possibly can, as mm. quick as possibly can. So I think it's it's Johnny's there. I still don't think like we've had this discussion time after time. Who's going to put him under pressure? Um, um, there's nobody putting him under pressure just yet. So, but we've just seen again as we've just watched in there. Guys get injured all the time. If Johnny was injured, what would happen? And um, I think Joey Carberry has played pretty well with Ireland. Um, I think his form has dropped off a bit with Munster. Um, um, a good bit, I think. And so he needs to get his confidence back in. Um, yeah, we're not. I mean, that's the purpose of this trip is to try and unearth people who are able to play in tough matches. Every one of these games is tough. What have you made of the Joe Schmidt element to proceedings this week? Uh, it's an intriguing nugget. I think Andy Farrell is saying he may not be in charge at all for Saturday. The lads could be could be back and, and it may not be as uh, as big a story as we, we first thought, but I'm sure there's a, a few nuggets he can bring to, to the All Blacks team this weekend. Absolutely. I Look, I think he has an attention to detail that everybody knows about. I think he... Um, I think some of that attention to detail may be... Um, a really good bonus to New Zealand. I don't think they want to play in that idea that they're going to play seven or eight phases and make certain that they score um, at the end of it. I think they play with a higher level of uh, freedom that's based on a higher level of skill. Um, they're far more risk willing um, uh, than, than, than Joe Schmidt's teams. But actually how to dismantle teams, he is incredibly good and... Uh, he'll be a bonus, a huge bonus to them. I, making a big story out of it because of the fact he was here before. No, I don't. I don't go for that at all. People move on. It's a professional game. What, what's your gut feeling about where the All Blacks will be then over the course of the next few weeks? Is it going to be a sort of a blood curdling thirst for revenge after what Ireland did to them at the end of last year? I think there'll be a fair bit of revenge in, involved in it because it's their pride has been affected. I think Foster is actually under a huge amount of pressure, and Joe Schmidt coming into the scene. Um, albeit early because of, of a COVID crisis and if things were to go very well would put him under even more pressure but it's um, yeah it's been interesting I, I, when, when you've looked at New Zealand coaching setups over the last number of World Cups they've had two or three or four World Cup coaches you know people who've who've been in World Cups previously or have coached overseas you've got a huge coaching ticket of experience that tends to blend things very well uh it's not quite that same at this stage and I, I, that's i think why joe schmidt's coming back in as an independent selector um but uh, i yeah i it's it's kind of one of those unusual things i always find when you go down to new zealand what happens at the very very start are new zealand confident or not confident well um their their uh, their franchises have been playing incredibly well over the last few weeks does that translate and can that translate quickly to to the all backs being up to speed and unearthing um, the players that they invariably do um, at this stage and who's going to suddenly shine? And so, look, I would expect them to start their ball rolling for a drive towards the World Cup to get their standard really, really high. And they like to go in with a huge win rate. So I don't think they'll be leaving anything on the field. Okay, so the verdict from this morning, Keith, is that it's a bit of a, a rude awakening, but you're not pressing the panic button just yet. No, I think it's a very tough, it's going to be a very tough tour. Um, uh, I think the pace of today was uh, a harbinger, uh, harbinger of what we're going to see over the next few weeks, and we have to be able to deal with that. If we deal with that, we're in a much better position. Okay, Keith, great stuff. Thanks a million for joining us. It was a pleasure. Cheers, Keith Wood, former Ireland captain there on the line. So it was... Uh, the 32 points to 17 to the Maori All Blacks this morning. It is uh, the first of a five-game series. Test number one is Saturday morning at five past eight Irish time. We'll chat to you tomorrow morning on OTB AM. Thanks a million for being with us. OTB AM with Gillette. Get into your flow with the new Gillette Labs Razor with exfoliating bar.